Hello everybody, it's Vanessa. Today I wanted to wrap up three more things that I read and surprise surprise they're all non-fiction. The first thing that I read since the last time I checked up with you was I Can't Breathe by Matt Taibbi. I listened to this exclusively on audio and I really liked that experience. This follows the life and death of Eric Garner who was put in a chokehold by the NYPD and he died. What happened after that? What his family thought of that? What occurred as a result of this case? I think what's done best in this book is giving you the truth personality of Eric, his family, and his friends because all of this was a story that was on the news. Through those news stories, we never really get to know the true personality of a person. I also thought it was really interesting to hear the ups and downs of his life and that's again something that we don't really get through news stories about deaths like this at the hands of police. For me to hear kind of when his life was really good and then when his life was not going well and he was in prison, when he came back out and decided I'm gonna start selling loose cigarettes. The reasoning for doing Doing that and kind of his entrepreneurial spirit in a way and his ingenuity like his business was illegal but the fact that he could like do all this math in his head of how much change he had to give back and he knew how much he had to have in his pocket at a time to avoid like a bad charge if he was to be caught with it a lot of his problems is a lack of job opportunity and him really having to come up with his own way of making money I thought this also offered a great look into police tactics how it has changed in the past 20 15 years years and the big focus that has been placed on numbers in New York State and the rise of stop and frisk and even the day that he was stopped and the day he was put in a chokehold police sometimes would see a person doing something that's illegal keep it in the back of their head and then catch them for it later in the day um, to kind of meet their statistics that they needed and that is actually what they think happened on the day that he was arrested and put in a chokehold he wasn't actually selling at that exact moment but he had been doing it earlier and they had seen him earlier the police kept that in the back of their head like we're going to arrest him later so really it goes into these interconnected issues of what the NYPD is thinking stats wise numbers wise the gentrification of his neighborhood to broken windows policing way of doing things because there's like brand new cars across the street from the park in the street where he usually sells his losies at. The instability of his professional life bleeding into the instability of his personal life, his broken relationships with his kids, with his wife, just how difficult it is for him to have a worthwhile relationship with them when he doesn't have a typical 9 to 5 and when what he's doing is illegal so he could at any point be taken to jail. The, the professional life needs to be fulfilled to also bring stability to his personal life and I could really see that in his relationship with Erica his daughter like he loves his kids and his kids love him but they also have issues and the way that I saw it is I feel like a lot of that came from the fact that he didn't have a normal nine-to-five job even his health he had sleep apnea his weight was also a problem and probably added to what happened when he was put in a chokehold all of that also has to deal with what his professional life is and what he's doing all day long standing on the streets my issues with this book number one I think compared to other books like this, I don't think this one is as successful. And I also think this one, not that it's biased per se, but there could have been a little bit more research done. There are no footnotes. There are no like resources or research. I wanted that historical background and to have it written down for me as well so I could kind of check it. Because when you compare this to like Ghetto Side by Joe Levy, it kind of follows the same thing. There's a death and we are following different people as to how this could have occurred and I think that Ghetto Side does it a lot better. And then my other real problem with this book is Matt Taibbi's interest in the subject and his history and his background as well. And I'm gonna leave links down below of things that have come out against him. At first it was kind of like a small little earthquake, but now he's been written about on the Washington Post. It's getting a lot more traction and I feel like he's really pushed aside what people have been saying about about his past journalism in Russia and the things that he has written about women and he has kind of just pushed it and said that he was being sarcastic and they were doing kind of like a parody. I understand why some people have things to say about it and I want you guys to also check it out because I think this book is important and I'm glad that I read it but I also think that people shouldn't get a pass just because they're writing books that delve into topics that are important to our current discussion about race in America so I'll leave some links down below just in case you want to check any of that out. The next book that I want to talk about is Evicted. I finally finished the last like 120 pages. I like listened to it in one go. I feel like my problems with this book when I first started was that 
it was a lot of people to follow it's like eight families to follow after you get used to that the stories really start like feeding into each other and you start seeing how everybody's really connected so if you are having problems with this at the beginning just keep going because I think this is really really worth it and I couldn't stop reading the last 120 pages. Matthew Desmond embedded himself into all of these families in Milwaukee probably about 10 years ago at this point and he did an ethnography of their lives and what it's like to be evicted and what repercussions that has on you know their employment, on their savings account, on their kids schooling and having to change schools so often, on their health and mental well-being as well, showing you that the instability of evictions reverberates through all of those things and that poverty is not only the cause of eviction but that also eviction could cause poverty. So eviction was not really common but they become so much more common now especially in big cities and especially towards women of color and black women specifically and their kids. I felt like they were the ones that got like the shortest end of the stick and were the ones that had the most pain and most struggle to get through situations like that and that it really forces them to have this mentality of survive one day at a time. I was just talking about how I Can't Breathe didn't really have any footnotes or like expand upon where he got any of that research from and this book does. <laughs> so reading this book after reading I Can't Breathe that also shows you how one book succeeded more than another when it comes to its research. It also has about like 50 or 60 pages of notes and a lot of it just adds to what he was talking about in the text and I would go back and forth and read those things because I found them really fascinating. So for example this one discusses relationships with strangers basically who like decided to live with each other to help each other in that moment and then that relationship really turned sour. So he says when tenuous but intense relationships between virtual strangers and badly or violently as they sometimes do they foster deep misgivings between peers and neighbors eroding community and network stability. Relying on disposable ties then is both a response and a source of social instability. Another one that I thought that was really interesting talking about how a mother would be talking to her son while she's facing evictions and she feels just emotionally drained and you know she only has one goal in mind and it's to find an apartment for her and her sons. The difficulty of all of that that you really kind of take it out on them sometimes and if you had that stability you would be a much more caring parents. So it says, today poor mothers are less supportive, less emotionally invested, and less solicitous of their children's needs, desires, and dreams. They give fewer hugs and tender fewer compliments. Mothers experiencing severe levels of economic deprivation hit and scold their children more frequently. The standard explanation for these troubling patterns goes like this. Poverty diminishes a person's capacity for affirming and supportive parenting because it causes mothers to become irritable, depressed, and anxious. If parents are irritable, depressed, and anxious, that increases their tendency to be punitive and less supportive of their children. The cluster of disadvantages and traumas we call poverty can siphon a mother's joy. But poor mothers are not the only ones who are irritable, depressed, or anxious. These conditions are not unique to poverty. What is unique to poverty is poverty. It is the experience of parenting and scarcity itself that impels mothers like Arlene to become harsh caregivers some of the time. Their barbed coolness is a necessary protection, a defense mechanism in the teeth of deprivation. You can't really be a great mother when all of your mental capacity goes to trying to make sure that you know where you're living and you have things to eat. How can you sit with your child and read to them? How can you sit with your child and do their homework with them when you're so busy thinking about what roof are you going to live under? This book had some just really interesting things to say, not just in the heartbreaking stories of the actual book of when he was there watching people, but also in the back as well. So even though this book is supposedly 300 and something pages, I say read the whole thing because there's just great stuff in all of it. So definitely if you haven't read Evicted, I definitely recommend it. I now understand why so many people think that this book is a masterpiece. And last but not least, let's talk about Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. I just finished this last night and I, look at me, I'm like pushing up my glasses but I don't have glasses on. I finished this last night and I was talking about it with Aaron and I think Talking about it with someone before you record like your wrap up is a good idea too. And I think it kind of seals your ideas fully. Um, so I think she understood like my qualms with this book because I didn't think this book was 
perfect per se. So this book follows Caitlin Dowdy. It's a memoir, her life working in a crematory in San Francisco, going to school for this as well, and just other personal details about her life, her thinking about death. And really her point here is she wants you to think about death and you to think about what people around you want to do with their bodies after they die, as well as you. What do you want to do when your body is done on this earth? So she wants us really to have our like existential death crisis before we are actually met with death because she feels that our, our big aversion to it, to death and to dealing with dead bodies is the fact that we don't think about it before it like finally hits us and happens to us. I thought she went into some really, really interesting discussions of things that I had never really thought about. I've never attended a funeral and I've never had someone like truly close to me die. I've never been met with these topics. So I guess I'm like her perfect student. Thinking about embalming is really fascinating to me. And I never really thought of it as kind of like putting lipstick on a pig. We are so grossed out by the look of a dead body that we want it to be made up to look like it looked in real life but that's very difficult also thinking about children who died and were sent to the crematory and like she had to put their tiny bodies in the machine like I never really thought about that of like what people do when they have children around them die I've never had that happen to me what it means for those parents and also what it means for Caitlin Dowdy and the people she worked with having to deal with like these tiny humans that didn't get to live the life that they should have. Also, eco-friendly ways of burying slash cremating yourself slash dying. When you're put in a casket, that casket is gonna stay around for a while and your body wants to naturally decompose. She talks about ways that we could be more eco-friendly when it comes to burying ourselves and cremating ourselves. You know, there's some that are like, well, I don't know if I'm about that. Like, she wants to personally be like given to the animals to have the animals eat her body, her leftover body, and then she's gonna be like part of the cycle of nature. I don't know if I would go that far but she also talks about like just burying yourself under dirt you just becoming part of the trees and I, I kind of like that so I never really thought about the ways that I want to be buried or cremated or like what I want my body to happen after I'm dead but now I'm going to think about it more for sure so I'm interested to continue thinking about mortality and death perfect topics for Christmas I think my only real problems with this book is towards the beginning she really focuses on her work and towards the end she starts focusing on parts of her life including like her romantic life including her own like mental health she doesn't really truly give us a lot of information about it and um, me and Aaron were talking about this and we said that's totally fine it's her own story if she doesn't want to divulge everything about her story that's fine but the fact that she would mention things it's only like a few pages and then it's like it's over it just felt like a little bit abrupt and a little bit like it was too raw for her to talk about so maybe I wish she hadn't talked about it as much because it felt like parts of the story were missing to me if you have read any of these or want to read any of these let me know in the comments thanks so much for watching my video I'll see you in my next one bye bye <coughs> 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 I'm dying